Gladys, from your perspective, what is one of the most common misconceptions that foreigners have of Cuba and its people? Well, I think that people have this idea of Cuba being uh, medical, the way that the Cuban government um, tells propaganda about Cuba is by saying that Cuba is una ciencia medica, like a medical emporium. Um, that plus the population uh, doesn't have to pay money for the hospitals or the doctors, that, that everything is just fantastic, that everything is state of the art. It's a misconception and that the Cuban people are very happy with their government. That is the biggest misconception. The Cuban people have become slaves, second, second and third class citizens. And uh, basically, it's a system in which the military and the people that have high positions in the Communist Party are the only ones that have access to good food, tourist facilities, international travel. But the Cuban people, which is 99% of the population, they cannot. For, for almost 50 years, the, the Cuban people have an upper hay and they were, they were not allowed to use their tourist facilities. The Cuban people could not enter the uh, hotels. They could not travel outside Cuba. They could not have a passport. Some people are not free. That's the biggest misconception. The people outside Cuba think that the people of Cuba are free to do, to live a free life, like people in Mexico and in many other countries. And I'm interested, Gladys, you now live in the U.S., so let's talk a little bit about your journey. So why did you leave Cuba? When did you leave Cuba? And what is it that drove you to move to the United States? I, I grew up. I, I lived in the countryside. I was a country girl and um, went to university in Havana. When I finished university, by working in Cuba the first few years after graduating, I just realized there's no future for me. Um, in Cuba, you cannot buy a house. You cannot rent a house. Uh, I left in 1992. There was a big hope and young people like me, I was 24 at the time, that the reforms of the Soviet Union the economic reforms and the separation and the um, the collapse of, of the wall would bring funds in Cuba. And it was a big dissolution for young people like me that were hoping for a little bit of freedom to come to Cuba after the collapse of the communist bloc. I realized that is not going to happen, Fidel Castro spoke very emphatically and, and just decided that Cuba was going to continue the communist path and that the Cuban people were going to be better off that way. And then I realized there's no future for me here and there, there will be no future for my children. 